Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of my previous video! <laughs> this video was requested by Cheyenne who asked for a more detailed tutorial about the lighting. You might remember his Trevor Noah's kit video and his really funny monk character from the Reillusion Lip Sync Contest. I'm going to try to break down my lighting technique <laughs> that I used for my Gopnik pictures and share what I look for. Bear in mind that I come from a 2D background, so my process might seem a little bit strange. <laughs> Anyways, let's begin! For this tutorial, I'm going to use iPhone 7 again. Don't forget to check out the Light and Lightroom folders that are available in the software already, or explore the image-based lighting option. Alright, you have your character ready, so let's talk about the lighting. Since my environment was already done enough, I decided to avoid using directional light on the other two types of lights, pin light and spotlight. I start by choosing the three-point lighting option that gives me the base. Key light number two gives me a general soft lighting that is similar in color to the environment. Lights will guide the eyes to the focus points of your image or animation. It does that by putting unimportant elements in shadows or at least in this case. So this is where key light number one comes along. I already mentioned that key light number two is similar to the environment. It can be the moon or the night sky. But as you can see, there is another light source in this image and those are the lamps that give a very kind of yellowish light to the picture. So key light number one can be yellow so that it can stand out from the general light. Also, it will focus on what else? The face, the most important part in your image. Unlike key light number two, which is broader and softer, key light number one is narrower, much smaller, but also brighter. You can play with the settings of each light separately, but unfortunately I cannot give you an exact formula since everything depends on the image that you are trying to create. The most important options are the multiplier, which defines the strength of your light, the range or aka the area that your light can reach and the follow which controls the sharpness of the edge. Bear in mind that the bigger your range gets, the more strength your light will need. So it's up to you, play around with the settings until you get the right result. The main tip I can give you here is to try to position your light so that you don't get weird shadows on the face. I sometimes even attach one of those face lights to the character so that it stays consistent during animation. Of course, this is not necessary and it might not work in some cases, but you can try it out and see what happens. Now we are moving to my favorite types of light, the backlights. Okay, so we have the environment light, which is kind of bluish, and also a yellow light inspired from the night lamps. All these lights, and it's still pretty dark, isn't it? We need some contrast here, guys. And that's where the backlight comes in handy. Let's pretend it's the moon, shining over our character's face making sure that some of the best details stand out and gives us a bright outline that separates him from the background. Let's leave this light alone, it's doing its best job to define the face, but we still need to outline the rest of his body since the background is so dark and his clothes are also dark. How about we create another light, weaker and broader? We can still say it's coming from the moon, but more distant moon? And much higher now that I think about it. Perfect to light up the hat. I don't really have a logical explanation for that one, I just think it looks better. Um, something still didn't feel right. You probably guessed it, it's still way too dark, especially on his left side. In this case, I created another lamplight. Not only did it help create a more finished look to the overall composition, but it also got rid of the shadow on his face that was bugging me a little bit. And speaking of composition, don't forget to use some lights to define some of the background shapes. Not only does it add more color to the picture, but it also helps with the contrast and helping your character stand out again. But you might try everything in this video and still get a very dull result. You might think, is there something wrong that you did? 
No, no, you didn't. You did everything right. What you're missing are my favorite, favorite, favorite part, the LUTs. I already mentioned them in my previous video, but in this one, I'm actually going to go a little bit more in depth. The way I see LUTs is like playing with the contrast, saturation, hue and brightness levels in Photoshop. So you might have picked some really nice bright colors for your lights, but they look kind of bleh. I'll be honest, I don't know what each LUT does, I've been judging what they do based on the preview image, but I'll go through each one of them and explain my logic. Every time you open Icon 7, you have two of the post effects already active. One of them is the contrast, which is quite useful, but I haven't really touched it in this case. And the other one is the color filter. As you remember, most of the lights were blue or yellowish in color, so to match that, I wanted to decrease the power of the red color while increasing the power of the green and blue color. Wow, that sounded so unprofessional. Anyways, as you can already tell, red color is the enemy in this picture. <laughs> Also, I have no professional knowledge of what I'm talking about. But I still liked red, so I used the LG Wash Reds, which added the red tint. I don't know, it's kind of washed out. But enough about reds. Let's get back to blues and greens and yellows. To increase the bluish tint in the picture, I used the Cool Colors LG. Things were getting a bit too bright, so I added the Foggy Night LG uh, with a very low strength. I honestly don't know why I even bothered. Oh well. But even more useless was the Cover Red Reduced LG, which basically did almost nothing, so I kind of left it out in the end. And lastly, I wanted to add something yellowish, and the Desert Sun LG did exactly that. Don't forget, you can play with the strength, but also you can play with the order. For example, the Desert Sun LUT doesn't have the same effect depending on the position, whether it's on top or at the bottom. Also, if you're wondering what I did first, whether it was the lights or the LUGs, I'm afraid I kind of did them simultaneously. I was experimenting, trying different things, and I was having fun. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs>